Hi everyone, it's good to be with you this week. What's been happening for you this week? What's weighing you down? Maybe it's the well-being of loved one or the stress of a job. Maybe you're at a crossroads in your life and you're not sure which way to go. Or maybe you're feeling stuck in a rut. Whatever that weight is, I invite you to put it down. Have God hold on to it for at least these next few minutes. Scripture invites us to cast all our burdens onto Jesus, for he cares for you. And take a deep breath. And repeat this to yourself. Jesus cares for me. And take another deep breath. And let the weight release and feel the release in your body. And let God hold whatever you're carrying right now. This Sunday, we are celebrating the affirmation of baptism for 14 of Augustana's young people at the 945 service. As you take time for prayer this week, I invite you to pray for these 14 young people, that they may continue to trust that Jesus cares for them as we know Jesus cares for us, and that they will continue to seek God's path for their lives and explore faith as they grow and as they mature. And we've seen a number of images in the letter to the Ephesians lifted up during our opening worship series this fall, and it gives us a better sense of what kind of people God is calling us to be. This week's text tells us that we are citizens with the saints, we are members of the household of God, and that we are a temple being built in the Lord. All of this, the text says, because of what Jesus has done through the cross. It always starts with God, but it always has an impact on our lives. So hear this reading from Ephesians 2, 11-22. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near, for through him, through Christ, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole world, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. It's clear from this reading that faith is not a static endeavor. We don't just arrive at being a Christian one day as if God is a destination and there's something to be completed. God is constantly on the move, making us into the household of God, making us into the temple Luther said that as Christians, we daily die and rise with Christ. It's an ongoing endeavor. Every day is a new day to grow into the gracious ways of Jesus. Faith is dynamic and it's relational. And in the reading this week, it's clear that we are created and redeemed for the sake of relationship, for the sake of building up something that we cannot build on our own. 
together we see more of the fullness of God. We can't do it on our own. I mentioned that it's Confirmation Sunday, and I'll be honest, there's always a bit of a twinge of grief on this day. I celebrate with these young people, but so often it feels like a destination rather than a mile marker along their life's journey. No, I get it. I live this reality with my family every day. Families are stretched to the breaking point, to the breaking point, constantly negotiating priorities. It's not like you can just give up everything and be part of the church. There are fewer hours throughout the week to be with one another as a family than there have been in all of modern American history. So what do we do? How do we be the body of Christ, the temple of Christ, with such a reality? Perhaps it starts where faith meets life. It starts with seeing that God's primary vehicle for building us up in faith is us, it's people. We are the temple of God. We gather together in small groups and large groups to be God's people so that we're reminded of the ways God works through us. We build Christian friendships because people pray for us and support us and encourage encourage us in faith. And that helps us to see that we are part of this work too. And trusting that God is at work in us to help us grow every day reminds us that the goal is not to arrive at some kind of destination. It's to be part of the journey, and that along that journey, God meets us wherever we are. For our practice this week, I want you to consider your own journey of faith. How have you changed since confirmation? If you were confirmed, if you were confirmed, And if not, consider how your relationship with God has changed since your youth. I'm sure it has. Were you once a stranger, but now are a citizen with the saints? Where has God surprised you in your life? Where have you sensed you are being built into the temple of God with others? I imagine that you'll experience some surprises as you think about this. You might experience ways or remember ways that God has met you, has reconciled you, has made you part of something that you didn't know that you could be part of. That's the work of God, tearing down walls, building us into a people, a holy people, so that God's love, God's grace, God's mercy and forgiveness might be ours and that we might share it with others. That's what it is to be the temple of God. Let's pray. Holy God, through the cross of Jesus, you reconcile us. You reconcile us to you and you reconcile us to one another. You make relationships possible that we couldn't have even asked or imagined. Oh God, work through us to be your church. Bless our young people as they affirm their faith this weekend. Fill them with your spirit and renew them in your grace. Be with their families as they negotiate the challenges of of growing up and of being your people in busy schedules. And help us as a whole church, as the body of Christ, to support and encourage and sustain one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you in worship.